start, baby. Kai. Kai. Hi, guys. Welcome to episode four. Oh, so you're still using guys even here? Yeah, well, I don't know. It's my trademark, isn't it? Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi yeah, guys. so it is. Yeah. Uh, sorry about if the if you can hear the rain. It's raining and... You can just snuggle up, find somewhere nice and cosy and sit yeah. in the corner and oh, we're cosy. listen to the rain. We've got our little heat on. <laughs> <laughs> so we're cosy. So sorry if the noise is bad. Um, yeah, we're still figuring out noise, but hopefully it's not too... And we're limited to time. We can't really put it off, so... Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. It's, I don't think it'll be too bad. I hope not. Yeah. yeah. We'll see how we'll we go. just talk closer and try and... Yeah, maybe we'll try and talk louder and drown it out a little bit. <laughs> this is kind of the, one of the problems of Peter's studio. It, it's not even raining that hard outside, but because it's got a tin roof, it always sounds so much worse than it is. And seven metres high <laughs> and then and echo against all the concrete. It, like, makes it a hundred times worse yeah. than it really is. The amount of times we'll be doing a shoot and it'll start raining and a model will look at us being like... Is that rain? And then they go outside and it's it's just a drizzle. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds, it like, sounds it's like it's bucketing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're you loving rain after your weekend oh of being in the rain. That's that's you new love. I have I think I have PTSD about rain. <laughs> <laughs> my tent got flooded. It was so bad. Like I was just sitting in my tent, and then all of a sudden my boyfriend noticed that his clothes were wet. So we looked over and somehow water had got in our tent and there was like giant puddles and half my tent was wet. Thankfully, the mattresses didn't get wet. Like all of our blankets, well, not all of them, but all the rugs I have on the floor, they were wet. Jared's clothes were wet. Mine were dry, of course. Mine were dry. (laughs) But our mattresses didn't get wet. So it could have been worse. We were looking on the bright side um, until Jared fell in the mud (laughs) and then his shoe fell apart. Oh, I don't ever want to see mud ever again. I can't believe I didn't fall over. Me being the klutz that I am. I can't believe you lasted the whole weekend. I did. I was it, really expecting you. Fr- uh, Saturday uh, night, midnight, I'm out of here. No, I was I was fine. The cold wasn't as bad as I thought. It was the rain that was more of a problem. But the cold was, I rubbed up. I was, I was very warm. Lots of sleeping bags. And it got away from the zeros anyway. It went more yeah. up around the sixes and sevens. I actually think it was it's probably colder in Melbourne than it was out where I was because I was out to the west, like out near Ballarat Way, mm. so it seemed a lot warmer out there. No, I survived. Mm, survived. I, I learned something and I can't remember what it was. <laughs> well done. It's really So is this what happened the whole time you're at school? I learned something today, but I can't remember what that was. Maybe I need to ask the teacher. <laughs> I remember on Saturday night I was sitting around at the stage. Jared was doing the projections. I was just watching everyone and I was having obviously like a massive drink bottle full of wine and I had like, I always try and do this after a festival, I always try and take something positive away and I had my positive thought of what I learnt and then I drank like another litre of wine so I can't remember. So how do you know you actually learnt something? I remember, I remember I learnt something but I just can't remember what I learnt. I don't know. I can't even tell you what it was. It was probably some wholesome hippie thing about, like, I don't know, being accepting of me. I don't know. I can't can't tell you. I was having a good time sitting around in the mud drinking my wine. Learning stuff that I can't remember. (laughs) Maybe you need to learn how to remember. Maybe. Maybe. That would be a smart thing to do. I learned something yesterday too. What did you learn? Well, I was... Well, with anyone who doesn't know, with our um, Inspire site, which is our subscription tutorial site, mm-hmm. we also have a little tag-on thing to it called Volley, which is somewhere where people can sort of chat live, but it's not quite live. It's sort of like recorded video, like some will just talking to their camera into me and the next time I turn my computer on, it says sitting for me and I can just answer straight away yeah. back in video, which is really handy and easy for someone with dyslexia and can't type. It's, just video, it's like a video messaging app. Video messaging yeah. app. Yeah. But anyway, so I've got someone on there who is keen to have his work critiqued and things like that. Uh, yeah. And when I was doing my rant for the Inspire, my little you thing, we put, new one we put up, yep. one of those things in there was don't be needy. And I started to point two and two together when his thing come up, because I haven't answered him yet, but I am, and I'm going to stretch it out over a long time. I'm going to ask little questions. So rather than just me do a rant about why, why, why. Yeah. I'm actually going to ask him, why do you need this? What are your plans? 
and build mm. something off that. But what I did find is so much of, so many of us need somebody to tell us we're doing the right thing or we're doing a good job. 100%. We don't trust that if we, are. we take a picture and if we love it, that's not good enough. We need somebody else to reinforce it. Well, it's something I heard um, Ben Crow say, which is you don't know what other people want or what pleases them. So how do you know what you're going to do is going to please them or and the more I thought about it, the deeper it got about, and I started looking even at myself with my cooking. I ask everyone, was that okay? Yeah. And I'll be eating it going, I love this, <laughs> but I still feel the need <laughs> to ask somebody else, like, it's going to make it taste better if they say yes or no. Or... We just, we constantly need validation, I guess. I think so. Yeah. But- I think that becomes a problem because then we're just trying to do things for others rather than do them for ourselves. Yeah. Like I know with my photography I've got to a comfortable stage where I don't care what you say, I like it. And once or twice on social media someone said something and just recently someone said something, oh, tiny hands. I don't know if you saw that comment. No, I didn't. And I didn't even know. And when I looked at the picture with tiny hands, I oh, my God, it looks like little baby doll hands. And then when I looked back, no, it doesn't look like her hand was only just showing her fingertips. Yeah. It's just he'd planted a seed for me to, to look, look at, at the picture differently than Rao. I had never even noticed it. And even when I go fresh back to it and look at it without thinking that, I think the hand looks fine. It looks proportioned to only seeing the tips of her hand. Mm. So it was so much of that where I needed somebody else to validate. Well, I validated it myself, but I can now see where people come needing that validation. Mm. But the problem is, is if you if you cooked up your, what was it, chicken chilli? White, white chicken chilli. Your white chicken chilli. If you made that to me and I go, oh, I think it needs a bit more spice, you would have maybe made it a bit different next time. Yeah, I probably would have put more chilli in it next time. But right, I was already questioning because I was thinking it was too hot. Yeah, or see what I mean? Yeah. But then if like, uh, yeah, it's hard. I think it just, I think that, I think the validation thing comes from like obviously insecurities, like. Or your parents. I think it just comes from insecurities as society, I think. I don't know. And that constant need to, you know, want to feel good. Like, whereas like you're secure enough in your photography that you're like, I don't care what anyone thinks. But I guess the reason that we do get asked so often for critiques and other photographers are always asking for that is because they are new and they are starting out and they do want that. They are wondering, do I have what it takes to make it? Like, am I good enough? And they want people to tell them that they're good enough so that because they don't believe it themselves yet. Does that make sense? <clears throat> A bit, but... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes, it does because I was in my early tr- transition from... Sh- I never need validating when I was shooting fishermen. Mm. For some reason, I never saw myself as a photographer. I just you just sort of documenting it. I just kind of was taking pictures like I did every time, but yeah. now somebody was paying me money for them. Yeah. So I didn't do. I know that it was. Ne- I never ever questioned it, not once. But when I started shooting people and that, yeah, well, stupid me into the wards. Mm-hmm. Stupid me would post on sites like five hundred pics and that looking for validation or looking for people to say, hey, that's really, really good. And I go, oh, good, that picture's good. And then I'd put up a picture and think later, I shouldn't have put that picture up. I don't really like it. And then everyone rave about how much they like it. And then I try and look back at it and think, I still don't like it. (laughs) Am I my brain wrong because I don't (laughs) like it and everybody's saying they like it? Yeah. But, yeah, I, I do it, – it's something – and another thing I'm getting from this is I'm finding the more that I'm talking about certain subjects. You, you saw my list mm-hmm. of my own rules that I set upon myself to get my brain in a really good mood for creating. But when I start talking about each of my points, it even sinks in even further where just reading the point didn't. But talking about it. Talking about it actually then opens me up. And I've heard people say that if you have an idea, write it on a piece of paper. Don't type it into a computer. Literally hand write it on a piece of paper because it sinks in. I think it's because we do so much mindless stuff on keyboards of computers without even thinking, especially watching you. (laughs) You'll be watching Drag Race and typing at the same time. (laughs) But 
I find myself like I have a little, I tried to have a dictaphone or I tried to set up like my uh, phone so I could just have an idea, just talk, talk, memo, mm. but it turns off all my system in a car. Oh. It just makes a mess of it. So I got myself a little, notepad. a little notepad with really nice little quality thing. Can't, you know me, I can't, I just love my. That is nice. It's really nice, isn't mm. it? So I got, got, and then people who aren't, who are in uh, potty land, sorry, it's just a brown wallet with a little white notepad. But it's kind of it. like suede. It's suede. It's not leather. It's oh. fat, fat leathers. No, it's not. Anyway, um, now in the car, you write I'm writing, or well, what did I say first thing this morning? About the the rabbit duck, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I want to see if it, maybe it's just you. Yeah. So I just, I want everybody to do this experiment. You, <laughs> you don't have to answer back, but I just want to find out if this podcast I was listening to is a load of rubbish or not. So if I say rabbit duck, what is the one thing that sticks in your head and what's the one thing you can't get out of your head? Now you've had time to think about it. If you say yellow duck, it means the podcast was right. But if you say rabbit, you're on Beck side. <laughs> you're if you just say like duck me. but it wasn't the colour, you're in between Beck and the podcast. <laughs> but I do know that when as soon as she said rabbit duck, the first thing that came to my head was a little yellow rubber duck. Well, you, this morning you said duck bunny and then all I could think of was little fluffy bunnies. Yeah, well, yeah, bunny, bunny duck, not rabbit, du- bunny duck. I don't know. What anyway, all I can think of a fluffy bunny. Anyway, the whole her whole thing was quite often we're already pre-programmed and we can't get past the duck. Hmm. But if we think about the rabbit, the duck disappears. So if we can picture now the rabbit, so it's a nice little white Easter bunny rabbit with a little tartan bow, oh, so right? So now you've completely forgotten about the yellow duck. So it's a way of getting and it's, it's a really good well i think it's a good podcast so um, i can give you oh no it's not pot, it's, it's not a podcast so it's an audible book oh, so we can't even send a link oh, come well, on we can still say it's um uh, we'll put it's something red thread finding your red thread it's some swedish saying or something but we'll give you a link to it i'm enjoying it it is sort of like a little bit off center it's more about how to put across an idea so people who don't get it, won't have the little yellow duck in their head and just ignore it. They'll actually open up a little bit more to see what the real picture is. Are you listening to this so I stop being so defensive? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so all these, all the podcasts and books I'm listening to is just to, to analyse back. <laughs> to fix me. But it's working. So I can't get over how many of the things that I've, little things, sorry about the bang on the microphone, little things that, I've listened to on audibles and podcasts. That I do. No, and it's not always oh. about you. But <laughs> it's no, always it's just about me. What are you little things about? that now I instantly are using. I'm saying to myself, "Ha, huh, you're doing that," mm. which has made me aware of some of the things we should fix. And one of them was a habits thing I listened to, and it was really, really interesting. About um, once you're made aware of a bad habit, which is only a little bad habit, all of a sudden you actually realise, well, I can fix that because now I'm aware of it. Every time I go, and the perfect one, he said, for people who are super overweight, the worst thing they can do is if you have a jar of lollies, if you have any of that stuff in the house because it's just there. And he said the next things are things like a toaster. If you have a toaster on the bench plugged in, it's so easy to grab a piece of toast and drop in it. But if you put that toaster in the cupboard and away, you'll You're find that you eat. Um, well, I didn't do that. All I do is if I go and see the toaster, I go, oh, no, it's in the cupboard. And I tend to, hard, we don't even go through a loaf of bread a week now. But we, is the toaster still in the cupboard at yours? No, but no, no in my brain. Oh, Every in your brain. If I go right. look at it, say, no, it's in the cupboard. I just tell myself. See, for me, I guess with my certain habits, I, mine's like, okay, especially with toast when it comes to that. So, I, we have the toaster on the bench at my house and... Plugged in? Yeah, and I rarely have toast have, at mine. Do you have bread lined up above it ready to drop straight in when you just say toast? No, because Jarrah's one of these toast in the freezer people oh, and yeah. it tastes different. No, you can't I'm do No, I can't do that. <laughs> I'd rather throw a lo- half a loaf out every no, week than I defrost. I can't have frozen. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm on so, your side. But if, the, if there is fresh bread sometimes, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll have one times toast, as we say. Um, but when I come to yours, 
I, for some reason, I always like I know that you've always got fresh white bread, and I just love that. And it's only and about we've got a jar of veggie might. I've got that at home, oh. but I just, I know there's always fresh ripe white bread and I got myself in this habit of most days at like 10.30 in the morning, I go and I make myself a slice of toast with butter and Vegemite, but that's more a timing thing. And so now I haven't, like, I think I've broken that habit, but there was, cause I'm trying to not eat so much bread. Cause like, you know, yeah. It's so bad it's, for you. It is. Yeah, let's eat McDonald's instead. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, well, I, have another wine, have exactly. a dart, but don't eat bread. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a beacon of hell, so yeah. <laughs> I will try to not eat bread. But I was trying to – there came a time thing. Like it would get to 10.30 and I'd be like, oh, I need to have toast. Like just – or I'd be like my stomach would start feeling rumbly and I'd look at the time and be like, oh, that's why I haven't had toast yet and it's nearly 11. So it was more a time thing rather than it being a – I know it's there. I, I don't know. So tipping point, it comes at three o'clock. o'clock. That's I nine o'clock. Wine. I need, I need a wine. Oh my! Well, we don't have tipping point here. So um, how do you do that? Oh, no, because it's. I know it's not here. No, it's not here. You know, if I but, have days off, I still watch it at home. Yeah, I'd believe that. <laughs> I love tipping point. But it's the, the habit thing is so interesting, especially if you can carefully listen to what he's saying. Even though it gets very annoying on how it, often he talks about certain things but mm. a lot of our habits are a lot of our bad habits are because we're rewarded instantly mm. so a cigarette mm-hmm. the second you put it in your mouth you're rewarded you've like, you've oh. fixed the monster which is the, the nicotine, nicotine addiction yeah. and now after that first drag you now feel what everybody else feels all day it brings you back to norm you don't have the stress of the nicotine monster on your back yeah Right. So that gives you an instant reward. Whereas you not having a piece, dropping out one piece of toast a day, that reward you don't see for a couple of months. Mm. So they say what you should do is find things to reward yourself when you do a good habit, which might not be your preferred habit. Now, remember when we first started traveling, I said, I don't have this little trick I'm doing. I'm mm. not going to tell you till the end of the trip. Yeah. And I never told you, did I? No. What was yeah, it? Yeah, because it failed. Oh. When we got to London, <laughs> something happened in London, and that was the end of it. Oh. And even in this thing, it says, once you break the habit twice, the habit is gone. And mm. it, guess what? It exactly worked as the book said. Mm. If you don't do something twice, you can skip it once every now and then, but as soon as you skip it twice, that is enough to lose a habit that you're trying to make something which isn't an instant reward mm-hmm. into something that becomes a reward just by doing it. Oh. So what my thing was, was I remember a radio pro, a radio host and he was super fit and he actually let as, well, one of the people that worked with him said on thing every time the ad breaks come on he would drop and do 10 push-ups mm. so at the end of his shift he would have done his 100 push-ups oh and we were going for walks heaps no oh. i made up a thing every time i went to the toilet i did 10 push-ups oh okay and oh. on the plane i couldn't obviously so i did 10 squats in the oh. because it's only tiny, tiny areas little, in the yeah. toilet if i was oh. in first class on the plane i could have done the 10 push-ups but somebody else took it <laughs> But then when I got food poisoning in London, I was on the toilet every 15 minutes okay. and I didn't dare do a push-up <laughs> because it would have come out both ends. Oh, gross. <laughs> so just that period, I was like, I wasn't settled for a good week or so, so pretty much, and that broke my habit. And three times I've tried to get back into it and it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked, damn. But it's really funny how you hear something. It's really funny how we just went from talking about everything to talking about no. push-ups in the toilet. Yeah. Anyway. Well, well, I'm I'm doing great. I've got a vape now. So, <laughs> so I've moved the nicotine <laughs> from here to there. <laughs> and I'm still smoking darts, but I'm not smoking less because I can just... Still smoking the same. I know, but... You still be putting the same nicotine in your system. I think I think the vape's weaker. Do you? I think you so. Feel like you feel you got... And I, I, when I have a cigarette, like a cigarette lasts for what, like between five and ten minutes, and I'm smoking it constantly. Whereas with the vape, I, I only have like a couple puffs on that when I'm just sitting on the couch. And because you're too late, instead of walking out into the freezing cold, you go, I'll just have a suck on. It vape. also tastes nice. Oh, <laughs> it duh, smells nice. Of course it does. And it's going to help my teeth. Yeah, exactly. This see? is why you should you give see, up smoking. 
Well, this is why I got a vape. Yeah, good. Now, the next thing is you need. All right, so I don't need to give up the vape. <laughs> I need to get you onto podcasts and things or Audible. So I'll give. You, I'll buy you an Audible account, and you really need to listen to that easy way guy because so clever, mm. really so clever about the way he puts the whole world in January. We get, sorry, in January. In why January? Because I'll be thirty. I suppose I gave up when I was thirty. Exactly. But, also, but you've got to get up to 60 a day first. No, no. <laughs> I'm trying to cut down. Also, just disclaimer for anyone who is listening to this, please do not come for me in the comments and tell me that I need to give up smoking and try and I know we're going to get all these comments now. Just please don't come for me. I've heard it all Even before. in a workshop in New York one I've, year, yeah. we had someone every single day <laughs> lectured. He, just, I he, he treated you like he was his daughter and hates you to die. Him. It was really sweet. And it I was, think someone maybe close to him might have. They did. And that's it was really, really sweet. And I do yeah, appreciate. But that doesn't help. No, I, I appreciate help at all. the place that everyone comes from. And I appreciate the encouragement. And I appreciate tips and stuff. But it's like. It's it kind of gets tiring when you are a smoker and you do have people constantly lecturing you. So please don't come for me. <laughs> well, I think the it's easier for you to give up than it was for me mm. because so much, especially in Australia, like cigarettes is a bad thing now. Oh, they're so. I'm so, like I'm a, I'm one of like the few people, and they are so expensive. Like when we were in Europe and people were complaining about how expensive they are, I was like, um, they're like thirty five euro a packet in Australia. Everyone fell over. Like they're so expensive. Yeah, here. but I saw some st- stats the other day. It's, it's great, like though. in Europe, it's still like twenty five or thirty percent of people smoke. Mm. Whereas in Australia, we're down to fifteen percent. Yes, no one's. I've, I'm one of the few of my friends that still do. So after it's not fun when you go to parties and you're you the have only to go one outside alone. on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no one else does anymore. I'm like, oh, okay, well this sucks. Everyone just sits inside vaping in the warmth, and I'm going outside. Oh, well, they're still. That's oh, the but same. they can be inside. <laughs> yeah, but that's they're still smokers. That's still yeah. because the vaping thing. I think long term, I think the vaping thing will be a hundred times worse than smoking. There's a thing in this TV show, a good TV show called Upload. It's on Amazon, and it's set in the future. And one of the characters' dad's in hospital, and they say that he's got a thing called vape lung, and because it's set in the future, it's well, his the, lungs are three quarter full of liquid. Or something, yeah. so it's like it's like the equivalent of like his. Yeah, I don't know. They kind of made a joke about it, how, like, this is going to be a thing in the future that everyone's going to get vape lung instead of getting lung cancer. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's a really dark joke, but... But all that stuff, as a, like, I use, I'm a, someone who, for a long time in my life, the best thing I ever achieved in life was giving up smoking. Mm. But I know it sounds really, really bad, but it was that hard for me. I'd never gone a day from about the age of maybe 16 to 30. No, I've never done a day. Mm. So I tried, never could last a day. And then when I finally did, it was through frigging antidepressant drugs, which Not like that you were depressed. No, no, these are, yeah. they found that everyone in these depression, uh, in, in these clinics were giving up smoking. <laughs> I thought, how does this work? You take the tablet, you got to take them like, Half of one the first day, half of one the second day, and if you haven't gone crazy, you can take a full one the next. It takes a week before they say take the proper dose. Mm. It just, I don't, can't explain it. it. Just makes cigarettes taste like crap. They taste so bad, mm. so you don't want that. But then the nicotine craving isn't there, and I think this is where the easy way comes in. The whole nicotine craving thing is we're told there is, yeah. So you just say, oh, there is. Mm. And, I, yeah, but I do know myself. I went two days without one and I said, that's it, I'm a mm-hmm. smoker because I've never gone two days, I'll never smoke again. And I'd get you know, ridiculously bad cravings for like one minute, mm. you know, six months later. So that, that, you just that one minute, you distract yourself, it's gone for another week just or drink month. drink some water or something. Yeah, do something. Yeah. But it, I do know what it was. The more people that kept on harping at oh. me to give up, the more I smoked. I'm the same. The more people tell me not to, I'm like, well, I'm going to have one just and to spot you. You've just <laughs> reminded me and now you stressed me about smoking. Yeah, so I'm going to have, gonna smoke. go have one. And also cause I'm a, I can be quite spiteful when I want to be. I'm like, well, you know what, just because you said this is I'm. But that's also just me and I, I don't know why I'm like this. Maybe I'm just a rebel at heart. But if you tell me not to do something, yeah, I'm going to do it. Like, as if you'd like, I don't. It was, really? 
can you please not work really hard and be really conscientious and can you turn up to work every day on time? And, I do. And, <laughs> I do all of this. When we're travelling, can you not sleep <coughs> in until three in the afternoon? Can you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my was, God. Was like, I remember when, it was, like, when the vaccines <laughs> first came out and the government was like, everyone needs to get vaccinated. I was like, I'm not. No. Just, but it was for no reason, just because they were telling me to. I'm like, no, because you told me to. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but then you told me I had to. Well, then, because then they turned around and they said, well, you can't go to a restaurant if you don't. And I was like, no, okay, they fair actually, enough. No, come on. What? You cannot go to a club or a pub. Same then you thing. went and got vaccinated that yeah. day. <laughs> Can I have all five boosters right now in one hand? <laughs> because. <laughs> but at first they were just like, you should. And I was like. No, yeah, like, but I've always been like that. Like even as a kid, like I've always been like, don't do it. Well, I'm gonna do it. Like, and when I was a kid, I was I, like that at school. I, I, I don't like, dot the T's. Yeah. I'm gonna put dots on every T. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was. Well, I don't remember, but I know it was actually. No, I think you I don't do remember. I oh, know. Is that I do. like the idea you had on the weekend? <laughs> no, I, I actually do remember. My mum was doing the ironing, and she had a hot iron out, and I went to go touch it, and she's like, "Don't touch it," and I was like. Just looked at her with this little cheeky shit eating grin that I do, and she's like, Don't touch it. But what I put my hand straight on it, burnt my hand, and so screams, I told you not to touch it. But this, I just do this. If you say don't do this, I will do it. If you say do it, I'm not going to do it. I'm stubborn. I'm a Capricorn. Don't earn me a million dollars. <laughs> don't buy me a Ferrari. Don't. <laughs> yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that literally. Uh-huh. But you know what I mean? Yes, I'm just I like that. So. Mean. That's exactly just what you mean. <laughs> that's just me being a little stubborn. I'm so stubborn. So stubborn. I, I annoy myself. I can't imagine how much I annoy You me. are stubborn because you get this thing. I'm going to go on with The Boys. I've finally watched the full season of The Boys. Beck would absolutely love it. It is black humour. <laughs> it is telling me blood it. and gore. There's sex objects. There's everything in it that Beck is going to go, this is cool. And I refuse to watch it because Peter said watch it. <laughs> Even her not- partner wants to watch it. No, not watch it. You're going to watch Drag Race. No, when did Joe say he wants four- to watch it? You told me he said he wanted to watch it. Maybe, he'd, maybe I did. Oh. Oh, that's right, because Len told him about it. Your yes. son told him about it. Yeah, that's right. And and I, know like, you, cool. I don't know. And the same with Ozark. You refuse to watch that, but you love Breaking Bad. You love all these other things, which oh, is so much like it. I've watched the trailer. I just. No, I'm I know the trailer interested. doesn't do it justice. But at the same point, I'm on the final season of Ozark, and now it's just getting to the point where it's this level of things that are going wrong, and now you kill this to fix this problem and create 10 more problems. If this keeps going, the world's going to implode. It's like. It, there doesn't seem to be an end. Every mm. time they do something which is really bad, it seems to be even worse. And I know that happens in real life, but after five episodes of it... Mm. It's getting a bit like... Find a different twist. For sure. Uh, I, th- I think I'm three more watches from the end of this series and then I'll find something. I don't, I've only just started watching TV again. Yeah. Because well, you've, weekend, since- you've got weekends free again. Since you're new, no, like, it's reset. not just weekends, oh. it's night times. Oh, that's cool. Is this because so, you've been new reset? Yeah. Cool. That's really awesome. It's that whole thing of not doing commercial work. Yeah. The commercial work gets me bogged down. I end up spending way too much on the computer contemplating how much I hate doing this. So you just scroll through so all that, I'm, All I'm doing is yeah. finding excuses to stop working, to get away from what I don't want to do. Well, I've removed what I don't want to do. So now you're doing... This what, we're Wednesday again now. We've done... We've already done one of our shoots, but we've got another one tomorrow. I've done... An, yeah, but I've also... You've done all the editing. I've done all the editing for a week plus a bit. I've nearly completely finished my web page. I can't believe it. It's like I reckon there's about 100 hours in that. Yes. Going through... I didn't remember... realise I had so many pictures on there. I had 3,800 pictures on my web page. Jeez. I've culled. Jeez. I know, but there's certain pictures that I'm emotionally attached to, but then when I separate the emotion, look at them, I guess, that's a pretty ordinary picture. Yeah. And I've only ever shot with her once. That was the first time I shot with her, and it's on a workshop. It's not a good picture just because... You were emotionally attached to it because you had a connection with that well, person. Well, I managed to get that picture out of her. So it meant a lot to you. Yeah, yeah. mentally, but... Yeah, once I said, once I removed it, it wasn't like, oh, my God. Although 
one or two are removed. Mm-hmm. And I'll, next time, oh, no, I can't. That can picture actually, I really like that picture. I might be emotionally attached to what happened when that picture was taken, but, but you actually really it, like it. It, I actually really like it. And if other people don't like it, I don't care. Yeah. I do that when I'm trying to clean out my wardrobe. I'm like, are there certain items of clothing? I'm like, I have worn this once and I'll probably never wear it again, but I'm so emotionally attached to it and I keep on, I hold on to it. I've got four shirts. Um, I think the clothing label's Berserk. I think of it, yeah. I think you it's, it's this whole emo one. Yeah, it's yeah. The yeah. black shirts with the right, the, sorry, the red screen print skulls and guns it's, and yeah. cross. They're really classy, really well done. Yeah. And they're all in large and my aim by mid next year, because I'm not rushing anything because rushing never works, no. is to be able to wear them again. Nice. Because I never wanted to throw them out because I love the shirts. I can't buy them anymore. So I've got to get my body back to fit them so I can wear them again because I actually really like them. I want to fit into this grey pair of jeans I have, but unfortunately. Impossible. No, it's unfortunate because I'm getting older and this thing happens to women where you get hips. And I don't know if my hips Most will women, oh, sorry, most females get that round about 20, 21. It's taken you till nearly 30 to get it. Stop complaining. But I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, if we go. We can go, always, <laughs> we can take them to someone and they can just unstitch the sides, put a little bit in and stitch nah. it back up again. No. Nah. No, nah, but they mean a lot to me. I got them when I was 21 in New York. and I'll just them. frame them and keep them. They're so cool. They're like, it's like light grey acid. You would have seen me wear them. They're really nice. I love them. Oh, the ones with the big muffin tops on. No, shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so horrible to me. Always. All the time. It's so nasty. It's pick People on. never hear of your horrible ones. Back to I am me. nice always. Always, yes. I'm so sweet. Anybody now. in I think, I think YouTube people... land can see the look on her face about how nice she is to me. <laughs> I think I think people are starting to find out a little another side to Beck. I'm not just always, hi, guys. No, you're not just a hi, guys. You're far would, from a hi, guys. I knew this would happen with these podcasts. Unfiltered Beck comes out. Unfiltered Beck can be pretty Ooh. full on. <laughs> don't don't poke the stick at this spider because it might look like this little fluffy hamster. Next minute the fangs come out and kill you. My boyfriend's a very patient man. Duh. He was very patient. I can't believe he's still alive. He's been alive for eight and a half years. <laughs> Good on him. Proud of him. It's a record. It's a record. It is. It is. He is. He so he's is. cooking tea tonight for you. He is. He is cooking tea, I think. I don't know what he's going to cook. Oh, the look on his face last night. I know what he's going to cook. <laughs> Uber Eats. <laughs> I'm going to get the recipe out. Oh, there's Uber Eats. <laughs> He, he's got – no, he, he can cook, but he can he can cook like three things. Yeah, but one of them's barbecue. Well, he's not doing he's that He's not doing tonight. that. He can do good breakfast. He can do chicken Kievs. Oh, oh there you go, chicken Kievs. You you can't, you're not going to eat breakfast at night time. No. I know you. No, he, well, he did Kievs, yeah. When I got my nails done the other week, he did Kievs. I'll probably, I'll probably be having Kievs again tonight, to be honest. And they bought Kievs pre-made? Of course. Oh, so they're just like – He does that and he makes mash and then he does – he steams some veggies. He's so clever. It's so so clever. So clever. He puts he puts the cans in the oven, makes mash because that's rocket science. <laughs> and steams veggies. I'm proud of him. He proud was of him. he was so excited for us to get home from Europe for the cooking. Like, oh, for the cook, for the food, <laughs> <laughs> not the for food. you. Just, so he had the whole bed, although he had both cats attacking him every yeah. night. But <laughs> I got home. Oh, I was you're like, home. Look at the dishes. Look at the laundry. Look at your plants are dead. The cats are starving and I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Almost exactly how it went down. No, I made like the meal for, meal plan for the week because I'm an organised person, so organised all the time. I can't. I seriously can't believe you pre COVID. Mm. No, nah. cooking. No, nah. I love it. Where's a phone number? Where's the <laughs> internet? I'll dial something in. They no, can it wasn't that. I did HelloFresh. I know, but it's the same thing. It's like they give you everything. You just yeah, they give me the recipe card. Like they give me the ingredients. Lego, put it together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best way. Like, it is, it is it's Lego, unfortunately, it is half the time Lego food. there's missing pieces. Uh, yes. Or they don't or fit rotten. or they put the wrong, yeah, or they've gone off and, yeah, you've now got yogurt instead of milk. Oh, the worst, I, it was just so annoying because you expect everything to be in there 
And so you don't go to the shops and then you cut open an onion and it's rotten inside, but then you don't have a spare onion because you didn't go grocery shopping because you're expect Frustration. Talking about that, so as you know, I've got into my chicken noodle soup. You love that, yeah. Right, so I do my own chicken stock. So mm. Shree feeds the dogs chicken a lot, so she quite often buys a roast chicken. I know it sounds really bad, but we've got two little dogs and it takes them three, four days to eat one chicken. So $12 a chicken, that's like $4 a meal for two. That Your cats right. would cost lots more than that. They're, yeah, they have expensive biscuits and they have the yeah. expensive tins. Anyway. Anyway, so all the carcasses go into the freezer and then I just do a stock Thanks. up. So I, I got a thing with some carrots, some celery, an onion, and did all my stock. That's so, so that sits for 12 hours simmering, not boiling, just simmering, sit, simmering just no bubbling at all. Mm -hmm. And it's just perfect. Strain it out. Then you make the chicken soup. We didn't start off with the same thing, celery, carrots, <laughs> <laughs> onions. So I've done all this, and the first onion cuts, it's starting to go off. I thought, that's the onion I should have put in the stock, not the oh. one I want to put in the Really? Yeah, you well, it doesn't matter the in the stock. You normally put your, the stuff that's not really, oh. you're, going, you're not going to eat that. You're just boiling the flavour out of it. I probably wouldn't, but I'm a princess. No, I'm not a McQueen, sorry. I'm McQueen. A, I'm, I'm a queen. queen. I'm a queen now. I'm a queen. You got a leather jacket and you jump fences on the motorbikes. Yeah. Steve. <laughs> Just call me Stephen. <laughs> That's, that soup is really good. I feel like every episode I, we get derailed and talk about food. food. I feel like It's good, but I think I'll make it better yet. I really like it. I put cayenne pepper, a little bit more mm. cayenne pepper in it. Yeah, it's that tasty. definitely. I like that, the that was a big batch. It was good though. But yeah. I feel like everyone's going to want to come and have dinner with us. Mm, I've got a good weekend. I'm going to do. St I'm doing ribs and steak this weekend, so I can't wait. Yum. For that. Am I going to my? You're nephews? missing out. Huh? You're just eating freaking fairy cakes and. Um, yeah, I'm going to a three year old's birthday. And what's it? Hundred and thousands bread. Oh. What, do they, what do they call that now? Fairy bread. It's called fairy bread. Yeah. See, it was hundred and thousands when I grew up. No, it's fairy bread. For anyone who's not Australian listening, so it's like bread with butter and then you get sprinkles, like hundreds and thousands of sprinkles, and you just put that on top and we call that yeah, fairy bread. So someone it's who doesn't Australian know what hundreds and thousands is. Sprinkles. Everyone knows that sprinkles. Like what you put on ice that, cream Do Americans do sprinkles? Yeah. Like right. what you put so on like So we call them hundreds and thousands. So yeah, it's basically um, rainbow Rainbow yeah. sprinkles that you like put on so ice cream. So it's just coloured sugar. Basically. Yeah. And we put that with butter on bread and feed it to children. Children. <laughs> An Australian <laughs> and red, and delicacy. Red yeah. And then wonder why the kids are running around psycho with access. I was speaking, okay, speaking of food and speaking of Australia, I don't know why on the way to the festival I was on my phone and I, I somehow fell down this rabbit hole of looking up what is Australian cuisine and I was looking at all these. Did it say sprinkles? <laughs> fairy bread, <laughs> lamingtons. Lamingtons. Meat pies, sausage rolls. I heard, I think, lamingtons is New Zealand. We no, stole it. No, we, we have a war with New Zealand about pavlova. New oh, Zealand, pavlova, that's right. New Zealand thinks what they about, start it, but we think we started it. So what about a trifle? Trifle. Oh, did we got this couple? See, Mrs. Fricker swore, and that's I used to do her roof of her house when I was about twelve, and she'd give us some trifle afterwards. Yeah. Um, she swore it was from Bendigo. It might actually. I think two of the guys. Actually, one of the guys at the festival store because I bought this up at the festival. Is it right? Food. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm sitting there eating cup noodles and like reheated bolognese that I made. Uh, by the way, just so everyone knows, our podcast is a photographer and a model talking about their life. <laughs> talking about food. I know. We, will, we do talk about photography and modelling. So I actually had a point about talking about modelling, but we've gotten derailed. All right, we'll finish on your... Oh, no, that was it. I was just talking about Australian food. And just, it's funny, just like looking at Australian food, I was like, oh. Oh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> well, I didn't. Most people think that dim sims. What country are dim sims from? They are from Australia. Yeah, they yeah. are. Do you know where they're from? Bendigo, Ballarat. I started in the gold fields. Oh. Do you know also HSPs are Australian? What's a HSP? Uh, you get it from like a kebab shop and it's you get like a container and they put chips and then they put the kebab meat shaved on top and then they put like two or three different sauces and then you eat it with a fork. So it's just like kebab meat and chips with sauce on it. It's called a halal snack pack. It originated here from Aussie kebab shops. Oh my god! Of course. <laughs> <laughs> HSPs. We just claim the world. They're they're well, elite. Sorry, Australian. That's, uh, the one thing I don't understand. We hear from certain. 
countries that Australians are racist. We can't be racist. None of them are, none of us are, like I think 10% of our population are really native Australians. Mm. The rest of us have come from every other country in the world. Yeah. Very anyway, multicultural. Very multicultural. And uh, I think that's some of our foods is. Like it's all like a, oh, that was a coffee. Red. The, the, the Melbourne coffee, coffee. you can't buy mm. anywhere in the world. It's a mixture of Greek and Italian coffee. And it's been blended over the years and years in Melbourne that if you had a coffee shop in Melbourne, you had to have the best coffee shop, otherwise you're out of business. And then they developed the perfect latte, the perfect mm. cap, um, cappuccino. cappuccino. Mm. And we travel around the world. We can't get anything. Except for in Italy. Italy coffee's good. Yeah, it's a different coffee though. It doesn't, yeah, but it's, it's not Melbourne not coffee. Melbourne, Melbourne coffee. coffee's good. New York, you've got the White Man, which is Hugh Jackman's place. Isn't it called Collins Street? No, it's another one. Oh. There's one called Little Collin Street, which oh, is one. on Fifth. Yeah. And there's, I know this because it took me four <laughs> trips to New York to find two decent places to have coffee. The Little Collin Street, which is the name of a street in Melbourne, and they even have a sign up that says that in, they've actually stolen a street sign and have it in their shop. And it's a tiny little shop. It's about the same size as this office. And there's a queue a mile long. And it turns out the two Melbourne guys who just brought the coffee from nice. Melbourne, they had a coffee shop in Little Collins Street, I think, and they moved it to there. And I'm going to drop a link in the description for anyone who's in New York who wants to try <laughs> what, we, we had, yeah. what we drink. And I think it's nearly certain it's white men, Hugh Jackman, and it's down the other end of, I only have a state down there, it's more down the financial end. And, again, it's a tiny little basically door in a wall with a queue a mile long out of it, and it is exactly the coffee we get in Melbourne. Yum. Sydney are getting close now. They used to be a long way away, but they're, they're getting close. They're getting close. Good on them. Brisbane still can't get there. <laughs> Bless I won't them. even comment about Perth. <laughs> Bless them. <laughs> Bless them all. Anyway, um, so you had a modelling thing. We've got to get food. Yeah, um, no, what's your modelling to... little My modelling notes? thing, well, again, I kind of... You're getting <laughs> your phone out because you can't remember what no, it gets, okay. This it gets... is really good. If everyone could see, she has this idea to bring up and she's gone five That's menus right. deep oh, no, into gets, her phone. It gets even better than this. I had this idea when I was watching Stranger Things last night and I can't even remember what the tangent I was going to go on, but I wrote myself a little shorthand note and I can't remember what my tangent was. But I kind of do because what I wrote down was the whole not a model versus model thing. Ah, and yeah, then I put then ne- next to it I've put dash icon versus actress. So huh? icon versus actress. So like okay, so this is I think this is the tangent I was going to go on. So this whole like not a model thing because I get can kind I, of Can we go back a step? I get annoyed. Yeah, we need to go back a few steps. We we had a saying, and I hashtagged it, not a model. Mm. So not a model is not saying that Beck is a terrible model. It's she doesn't fit the box of what is expected of a commercial professional model. And also I don't do commercial modelling. I Except, but that's what not a model. I model for myself. But if... (laughs) You would ask me what other people would fit into that box. I would nearly say people like Adriana Lima, Candace. A lot of they will not just wear anything. They will not do what any art director says. They will not do what any. They have got a brand. They mm-hmm. have a look, and you can employ their brand. You can employ their look, but you can't change their brand or look because that's their, their brand, brand, and they don't want you destroying their brand. Totally. So I say that's not a model. Now, Beck knows from the very early days I was shooting her at 18, 19, mm-hmm. I was trying to make her a model. Mm-hmm. A fashion model, high-end fashion model. And You told me a high-end fashion model is a girl in a G-string. That is all you are. You are a living mannequin that is... And the industry is harsh and it's cool, and they're going to speak to you like you're a mannequin. They're going to speak to you like you don't have feelings. But that's they'll all talk you are. right behind your back about how ugly you are, or how you don't fit the square or how your there, arms are or a your weird shape, shape or your fingers are too long, or your nose is. That, but this is what a real model is. A real model is there as like a moving mannequin. Totally. Um, and in the fashion world, you've got to be prepared to walk out on a catwalk in the G-string only, and that's your job as a model. Now, those years have changed. The, totally. 
There is a little bit of a comeback. I've noticed Vogue around the world has gone a little bit back to old style. I saw three or four covers and thought, oh, this feels like the 90s. They were back in telling a story in the photos, not... But anyway, I'm, di- I'm getting distracted. So we, we had a thing called not a model, which means not that Beck is a crap model. Beck is an amazing model, but she's a model in her style, her mm. way. Don't put her in a fluffy pink... I oh, know you might like fluffy pink dresses. I'm not really big on pink. It's, it doesn't suit my but skin tone. Don't put her in white. Why don't I'm white? I thought you said you don't do white. No, I don't do pink. You don't do pink. No, pink doesn't, it just doesn't suit my skin tone. Oh, don't put her in green. green. She doesn't eat greens. Remember the I green dress? Don't put me in orange. Orange, orange doesn't suit. Oh. Oh, orange is bad. Anyway, uh, not a model was more a thing saying that she is not a, commercial, a model. commercial model. It is not putting her down in any way. In fact, it means that she is at a higher level than a commercial model because a commercial model will do weddings, parties, anything. Mm. And Beck will only do Beck. Yes. And that's and it. That like you're going to get Once you me. get to the stage, <laughs> and I've just done that with my own business. I'm not a photographer anymore. Yeah. I do not do commercial anymore because I got sick and tired of people making me do stuff I don't like, like colour, like, yeah. Everything I don't want to do, people would make me do. Yeah, but, like, you don't want to do product. You don't want to do... Like, yeah, whereas now I'm not a photographer, which means people leave me alone. Exactly. So people send us a message, oh, what's Peter's rates? Oh, Peter's Sorry, Peter's not, not a doing, photographer. Peter doesn't do that. <laughs> like Peter's books are closed. And it's the same with me. Like if I if I don't want to do something, I don't do it. But like it's, yeah, like I, so, and there's nothing stopping me from going out and joining an agency and getting You would then, hate it. But exactly. I would hate That's what I mean. There's no, But there's nothing stopping me from doing that. I've got enough photos in my folio. I've got oh, enough easily, experience. Yeah. I could easily go out tomorrow you and get You still look signed. like you're 24. You still stick skinny. It still yeah. fit the brief of anything that they're doing. I could go out to an agency. But you'd punch the first friggin' art director in the face. Literally. <laughs> but then there are people like like Shay, like Abby, like Rara, who are amazing models. No, but like, even Shay. Shay, wouldn't, Shay would only do her brand. She can't do other brands. Oh, yeah, I guess. Okay, back in the day. No, back, she- in, no. <laughs> back in the day, well, Tisha and all of those would basically, well, even Candace and mm. all of them, before okay. they were classed as super, and not saying you're a supermodel, but before they were classed mm. as supermodel, they need to get seen and they needed to make money. Yeah, true. But and then you've got really, if you think about it carefully, most Girls have only got six years to make money. Between 18 and about 24, because agencies start flicking you at 24. Mm -hmm. If you can't make a lot of money there or become a look, which means you need to stop doing what other people want you to do and so you have your look, so you stereo cast into what you want to do, um, that's the end of your career. So you've got to make a lot of money in that short period of time. Okay, perfect example, Mika. Mika is an amazing model, but Mika is a model. Like, I would say so at least. No, she's 100% a model. She'll pretty much do anything for mm. the client. Yeah. Like, she'll and allow she's people to stand on top of her underwater <laughs> with loose electrical cables hanging over the water. And she's still going to look yeah. a million bucks. Like, she, so she's yeah. a great model. And I think, I think the reason I wrote my little dash next to it is like another way of wording it rather than this whole not a model, first model is okay, like an icon and then an actress. An actress is going to play a specific role and she's going to fit that role and she's going to play it perfectly and you're not going to see the person, you're going to see the character. Whereas you've got an icon which is always going to see that person. Like, does that make sense? Oh, yeah, but I use this all the time on models. Yeah. I, especially even people who want to start acting. You, The very best way to make it as an actor gets stereo cast. Mm. Because if you think about it really carefully, you have directors, producers all that around a table and someone goes, I want someone that has that, you know, that, Punsy Sean Penn look. They go, oh, let's just, just look get Sean Penn. Penn. Yeah. We want this tough Mexican bitchy look. Oh, let's get Eva Mendez. Yeah. Instantly, and they'll even drop their name as this is the look I want. So, yeah. so that is the person they're going to get. But, and, but then you've got your people like, unfortunately, they're Australians. You've got your Hugh Jackmans, you've got your Margot Kate Blanchens, Margot, Margot Robbie, Robbie, who tend to disappear in their roles. You don't see them anymore. You see their You role. see the character they play. But then you get someone like an Angelina Jolie. You always see Angelina Jolie, but she's not stereocast into mm. a 
a certain type of actor, but you see her. Brad Pitt, you always see Brad Pitt. Yeah. Marlon Brando, you only see Marlon. You know, all mm-hmm. those. So this, and same with a model. If you have, if you can get stereocast or have a look, you would not try and take them out of that look. Mm. But when you're either really, really good at your job so you can just disappear into anybody's look, mm. that is more what a model should be. Totally. So they can do a, a Vera Wang and then go to an Alexander McQueen and they go do a Vivian Westwood and then they can do Helmut Lang, do any of those designers. And people don't go, oh, that's Abby Lee. Yeah. But when you get a, a Adriana Lima or a Kate Moss or a Naomi Campbell, the second to walk out in the catwalk, it's, oh, it's Kate Moss. Yeah. So, but going back on this not a model thing, so one of the things that I've learned in four and a bit years from Beck is if you repeat anything three times, <laughs> Beck gets really, really, really annoyed. So Beck and I had our own little private in-house joke, <laughs> not a model, because we both agreed she was not a model. She was better than just I'm a just not a commercial model, model. so I'm not a model. And so it was our only We joke. still, like, three, four years later, we get pe- people who hashtag not a model. Yeah, right, she's a great model. And, it's, and like, it's sort of like Beck just oh. sees red every time. So <laughs> seriously, and we even did, well, there's even a YouTube on us at the oh. interview in Canada. That Canada. Us talking ca- Canada. <laughs> Talking about this, but we still have people that keep on to bring up. The not a model was just a little in-house thing that Beck and I said that, yeah. no, she's not a model. She won't do anything but what she does do is amazing. Yeah, I'm still But I'm she's still over the hashtag. Can you, if, please, everyone who sees this, can you hashtag in the oh, comments? <laughs> don't come Beck for me. Beck will love you to bits. So. <laughs> don't come for me about smoking and just don't stop hashtagging it. <laughs> So this this episode is all the things don't so don't talk to Beck about smoking, drinking wine, or not a model. Um, what else do you get picked on about? I'm just going to stop telling people because everyone's going to take this and run with it. I know, of course. This they is are. so annoying. Hashtag like crazy. Well, let's make no. Oh don't. I think every, anybody who really hashtags needs to send her a dollar. <laughs> so I'm happy for you to hashtag, but Beck, Beck really, really, really no, wants. No, send me a bottle of wine. <laughs> I thought you really want a Ferrari 488. Well, yeah, if everybody okay, if in the send world sends you one dollar, you'll but, have it. But if everyone sends me a bottle of wine, that means I don't have to spend my money on wine, which is a lot more than one dollar, which means I'll have more money to buy a Ferrari quicker. In fact, you'll be able to Smuts. buy a Ferrari in three weeks. Exactly. With your, your wine same, bill. In fact, same. no, that's going to make me richer. Wine. Oh, because you're not well, more than half. Yeah. I'd say I'm three quarters of the wine you drink a week comes from me. I wouldn't say three quarters. So maybe fifty percent. How much wine do you drink a week? You oh. three drink three dozen of mine a week. Three dozen. I'm What's joking. It? I'm just trying to get the haters to go. Yeah. Sorry, I don't, don't even my, my little <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's about to count. What three dozen? I failed year nine math, okay? And you have me doing your accounting. I know. Well, it's... I fail life. No, no, you don't. And I'm your boss. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, oh. so that was my rant about that. Well, I don't yeah. know. I think it's just. I I'm think on your side. I think we had a little joke I think it's nice that other people are still you, saying that you're an amazing model, so yeah, another model doesn't count. But which, which I we understand. We weren't never saying. But we're that, never saying that I'm not. We're never a saying model. she was a bad model. We're just saying she not doesn't fit model. the box of yeah. what's expected of a commercial model. Yeah. Because if Beck turned up to any casting, she, no, I'm not wearing I'm not that. Doing that. You're not doing my hair like that. I'm not doing natural. And mm. he's not photographing. I'm me. not doing bridal. <laughs> I'm <am> not. <laughs> I'm not doing pretty. Can you pretty. smile? No. Oh. oh my god! Is my, just give a little smile. No, I don't smile. I'm a grumpy emo. Okay, give me grunge. That's what I do. That's you my. Smile brand. before a coffee. Oh no, it's a snarl. No, exactly. <laughs> I smile after a wine. <laughs> but yeah, so like I don't know that. Like I, I know that it comes from a really nice place. Like I. And I, I, I'm no, aware of this. No, I know we, it comes yeah. from a nice place. And I know it's people, people who want to connect and think it's and cool. And people are complimenting me, and but I totally understand people are complimenting me. After the third hashtag, Beck is already seeing red. No, but it's just like it's it's because I know it's it coming from a nice place, but it's not what I meant. It's like I know yeah. you're trying to compliment me, but it's 
Ah, like, Our nodder model is not what you're saying. It's not what yeah. you're thinking. It's, um, it's, I know there's, there's certain comments that we get that I know are coming from a nice place, but they still, I'm just like, ah, like, like when. Like and now you're getting everybody paranoid about comments. No, already had somebody, I, I don't know if I've got enough time today, but maybe we, someone's already been to like, oh, well, you had to go at people at workshops because they did this. And it wasn't how many go it was because I said, I do the same thing. Yeah. If someone's super pretty, sometimes their brain goes dead. I don't look at the light mm. and take photos of them. It's sort of like, no, and you hear me on workshops every day. Pretend they're ugly, pretend they're ugly, find them beautiful. Ugly, yeah. like, to make them beautiful, don't just look at them being beautiful. Yeah. So it's, sometimes people read what we say. But, the yeah, wrong totally, way. because we, oh, we come across fit, wrong. You can, I'll turn it off. You can finish your one line and then because we're a little bit short on the last one. So we were. we're allowed to be so I'll not, give you three minutes to go over. We're never we're never having a go at anyone and I know like we do love every single comment that we get. We love all the support. We love all of you guys. We love we, everyone at workshops. We actually have a ball. We, we just get, we do. Like I literally like you should see us after workshops. We literally go back and we buzz. And me and yeah. Peter, like we struggle to sleep afterwards because we are just like so buzzed from everyone. And well, they're like bulb moments. So. Oh my just, God, their light bulb moments are the just best. Just when they come ever. up at the end, like and show us photos. I'm like, I took this. It's so good. And I'll never forget the in Paris. Like we had the five day one. And oh I had three God. guys come up and cry. And one of the guys was this big, poly, strong, tough He's guy so that everyone didn't like because he was so. Blah, 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 blah. And he came, <laughs> and full tears coming out of his eyes. No, he it was, was a so lovely. Sweet. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, all of the comments, like we do, really love and appreciate everyone. It's just I don't know. For me, like Peter said, I just get annoyed kind of easily and. I feel like people are saying saying this, trying to stand up for me when there's nothing to stand up for. <laughs> like, yeah. it's cool. like it's cool. It's cool. Like we know I'm a model and well, it Beck, means I something wouldn't different. Shoot. Well, I'm the one who <laughs> has to pester Beck for a shoot now. That's because I'm too good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I hope that we don't come across wrong. We don't mean we don't. Yeah, we we're do, just unfiltered. We do we're unfiltered. We just yeah. <laughs> people are gonna get used to. We're just unfiltered. It's like us sitting around or sitting at. This is like having a drink no, with us. Standing no, at a bar. No, we can't do standing at a bar because not everyone's a drinker. Oh. The water tank in an office. Yeah. We're standing at the water tank in the office. Totes. How's that? Totes. I'm at the bar. <laughs> I'm filling the water tank up. And I'm filling the water tank up with wine. <laughs> wine. Yeah. Anyway, that's the end. We better shut up because we kept on saying it's 55 minutes yes. and Beck has to go get waxed. Okay. <laughs> Love you guys. Oh, that's really nice of me. Bye, guys. <laughs>